Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, it's a little windy right now, so hopefully you can hear me all right. But uh, today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Uh, I've been asked a few times recently how we set our properties up for whitetail hunting. And instead of going over that in one video, I thought it might be a good idea to break it down into a few videos. That way we can kind of dive into more detail on each aspect of setting up your property for whitetail hunting. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the first step in the process. So you just closed on your new hunting property, or maybe it's been in your family for a long time, but you're just now uh, wanting to set it up for whitetail hunting, where do you start? Well, before you start putting in your food plots or your switchgrass or planting your apple trees, the first thing that you need to do is figure out what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish on this hunting parcel? So what I would recommend doing is get everyone together that's gonna to be hunting on that property uh, sit, sit everyone down and just kind of have a round table discussion as to what everyone's goals are and why I think that this is probably one of the, the most important steps in the beginning is because it really sets the table as to what you're going to be doing going forward. Uh, for example, uh, everyone's going to have different goals. So let, let's say I'm new, a new hunter and I just bought a piece of property and my goal is I want to harvest a deer. I don't care what kind of a deer it is, I just want to take a deer. And in order for me to accomplish that goal, I wouldn't need to be putting in as much work as someone with a goal, let's say, they want to harvest a four and a half year old buck here in Michigan. That person is going to have to commit to a lot more work than the person that just wants to harvest a deer, you know, maybe every other year. So let's kind of discuss a few things that you really need to think about when you're setting your management goals and your harvest goals. And these are gonna be in no particular order, just some kind of some things to consider. Uh, the most important thing I would say is make sure that your goals are realistic. For example, I used to live uh, in Rockford, Michigan on two acres in a wooded setting, but we didn't really have a lot of cover near us. It was a lot of open timber and I didn't have access to do any improvements on the neighboring parcels. So we didn't really have a lot of older deer or older bucks use the area. Every once in a while during the rut, there would be a nice three-year-old that would come through. Um, but again, that doesn't matter. It's he's coming through at night. So if I had a goal of harvesting a three and a half year old deer on that property, I would be waiting a very long time to accomplish that goal. So you really need to think about what your current situation is and then kind of apply the goals based on that. So we'll kind of go over the different scenarios and things that you need to consider. And these are gonna be in no particular order of importance, just kind of things to think about when you're setting those realistic goals. So one thing you'll need to consider is how many people are hunting your property, you know, compared to how many deer that you wanna take per year. So I'll give you our example. We hunt on a few 70 acre pieces and plus this is a 36 acre piece. We've got about six guys within our hunting group that'll rotate and, and hunt those parcels. Now, we know realistically that not every one of us is going to get a mature buck every single year. If our goal on a 36 acre parcel like this was to have six guys harvest a four and a half year old buck every single year, we would never meet our goal. So our goal on this property and the other properties is we, we really try to harvest one to two mature bucks per property per season and sometimes someone will get two, sometimes someone will get one, sometimes someone doesn't get any, but typically we meet our goals because we set realistic goals. So another very realistic aspect that you need to consider when setting your harvest goals is how much work are you willing to put in to all this habitat management stuff? And so, some people have more time than others, some people live closer to their properties than others, um, but that's one thing that you definitely need to consider. You know, are, are you someone that doesn't really want to do a whole lot of work, but you're going to set a pretty lofty goal? Or are you someone that's going to be on your property every weekend, you know, cutting trees, manicuring trails, prepping your food plots? You know, there are so many different degrees to which you can put the work in. Some people have access to more equipment. Some people have more time than others. Some people are willing to put in more work than others. But that is a huge factor as it relates to success. If I don't want to put in any work on this property and I want to shoot a four and a half year old buck, I'm probably not going to achieve my goal very often. 
But if I want to put in, you know, the food plots, the bedding areas, manicure the trails, if I'm going to hunt it the right way, you know, I just increase my odds of, of accomplishing my goal tenfold. But if you don't want to put in the work, then don't really expect to have amazing results every year because if, if you put in the work, the, the chances of you finding success are going to increase. But if you don't put in the work, it, it really is going to be random. And I'm not going to say you can't have success. You can have success. You're just not going to find success nearly as often as someone who's willing to put in a lot of work. Another thing that you really got to think about is, is where you're hunting. And so most of our videos are kind of geared towards guys in Michigan. What you don't want to do as a hunter in Michigan, and there are some great areas in Michigan, don't get me wrong, but you don't want to be applying the standards of someone hunting out in Iowa or someone hunting in Southern Illinois to you hunting in Kent County, Barry County, Michigan. You're just going to be setting yourself up for disappointment. And you might be seeing a, a really nice old buck, but because he doesn't score like a buck from Iowa would score, he doesn't look like the bucks you see on TV, you might pass him up. And that might have been the oldest buck in the area. You really want to make sure you know your area, you know the, the, the local deer herd, and you're not applying standards from you know, guys you're watching in Iowa or you know, Buffalo County, Wisconsin, or Southern Illinois, some of those, you know, Pope and Young hot spots. you really want to make sure you're setting realistic expectations based on what you know is in the area. So along the same lines of knowing your area, you also kind of have to apply your parcel size along with your neighbors. Just know that if you're the guy with 10 acres surrounded by hunters, that don't have the same goals as you, you're going to need to put in a lot more work than someone, let's say, that has 100 acres surrounded by farmland and no hunters. So just th those are just some things to kind of keep in mind when you're setting your goals. And one thing that I want everyone to, to make sure that they understand is, and, and maybe you don't agree with me on this, but if your goals are different than somebody else, like your neighbor or even a buddy who you talk to about hunting, that's okay. You know, people are people hunt for different reasons, and what you really need to think about is some people have access to more resources than others. You know, you don't know everyone's situation. So just because someone is is shooting a year and a half old buck and, and you're holding out for two or you're holding out for four and a half year old bucks, you really shouldn't care. Now, I will say, like if, if you are in a hunting group and everyone's hunting on the same parcel, you, you should probably come to some sort of a consensus for your property so that everyone can be on the same page for your property. But when it comes to, to neighbors or friends, you, you really shouldn't care too much about what they do or it shouldn't upset you. And I will, but I will say this, and we'll talk about this in another video, if you're someone who wants to harvest older deer and you know your neighbor does not, that is definitely something that you need to consider when setting up your property plan. We'll talk about that later in the series, exactly how we can kind of pull those deer away from that neighbor and kind of set you, yourself up for success and to keep those deer alive for multiple seasons. And I'll kind of wrap it up with this. Uh, the most important thing that you need to realize with any of this stuff is it needs to be fun. If you're setting a goal that's unrealistic and you never achieve it, and you just sit out in the woods every single year, past deer, past deer, past deer, you know, that's not gonna be very fun. What you really need to remember is why you started hunting in the first place. I am all for people taking, you know, the next step in, the, in their hunting evolution, but you, you still need to remember back to why you started in the first place. If it's ever getting to the point where you're not having fun anymore, maybe reevaluate your goals and say, you know what, Maybe we're trying to do something that isn't very realistic for this area. Let's tone it back a little bit and let's harvest this three and a half year old instead of waiting for that five and a half year old. And that's totally okay. Not everyone's going to have the same goals. And as long as you are happy with what you're doing, that's all that matters. Just remember to keep having fun. That's what this whole thing is about. Uh, if, if you stop having fun, like why would anyone that, that sees you not having fun doing this stuff want to pick up hunting in the first place. If, if I'm back there and I'm hunting and I'm not having fun and my, and my son sees me, he's not gonna wanna start hunting. He's like, oh man, that's, that looks like a lot of work and you don't even have any fun. No, he, the reason that we started was because it's a blast. And that's kind of what we need to make sure that we're still focusing on is that we're still having fun. 
Anyways, hopefully that was a good kickoff to the series. I know we didn't really dive into much on setting up bedding areas or food plots or manicuring trails or things like that, but I do feel that setting realistic goals is a crucial first step for anyone that's setting up their property plan. We look forward to bringing you to the series and we will see you guys in the next video.